Netflix that isn't the best one. Mm And follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Sturbridge. Special welcome to those who are joining us online for the first time. You're glad you found your way here. If you are looking for worship materials this morning and are gathered in the sanctuary, you can find our Bluegrass <coughs> booklet out on the table along with the bulletin. For those who are online, our worship materials are on our Facebook page and we're sent to
to you. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Happy birthday to you. There we go. <laughs> Prayers for full worship services, of course. Amen. Uh, Mel. Uh, just uh, prayers of joy that Dr. Uh, that we're praying from Afghanistan, Dr. Leicester, Massachusetts. Hey, that's great. The father. Awesome journey. Also, that's just great joy, and looks like getting a, a new car. So, Yay. All right. to independence, which I prefer to be in the United States, so I'm really happy for the family. That's fantastic. We rejoice with the father of the family we've been supporting from Afghanistan, who uh, obtains his driver's license. Looks like we'll be a new car. I, I feel like I haven't been here in a long time. I also want to share, I'm not sure if this was shared, but they had a beautiful baby boy. Uh, yeah, okay, I wasn't sure if I wasn't here when half the day. They also, uh, that's even more important, so I'm sorry I've been uh, busy at camp, but they also had to put a Mohammed, is, um, a new baby boy was born for the family, and uh, he is beautiful and healthy, and everyone is healthy. So just thank you for all your support. So. Great, yeah, we rejoice. I mean, there was a beautiful joint baby shower engagement party that happened. I don't know, I've lost track of time, maybe four to six weeks ago, somewhere in that range, uh, to celebrate uh, with the family and uh, their, their baby has since arrived, so we rejoice with that as well. Dave, do we have anything on Facebook? Let's see. Um, no, but we are having a couple of technical issues which we're working on. All right. Can they still hear us? They can still hear us, and um, uh, I'll be getting the video back here as soon as we can. All right, so for those online, bear with us navigating some technical issues, um, but we'll try and get the video back ASAP. Uh, a few prayers I have to lift up this morning. I received an email from uh, Kathy Sheehan, who is away, um, with the sad news that baby Casey died. Uh, infection that set in after um, a stint at rehab. So uh, please keep that family in your prayers. Uh, pretty pretty sad and uh, weren't necessarily thinking that was going to happen. Um, also a prayer from Debbie Gaston who has uh, joined us uh, on and off again for the past several months. Her friend Allison Winnie uh, had a car accident and is in the hospital and um, either preparing for surgery or already had surgery um, to address some of the challenges that she's facing as well. Of course, I, uh, we should continue to pray for the people of Ukraine um, in all places in the world that uh, do have no peace right now um, as that war continues to drag on as well. Other prayer requests this morning? Anything else on Facebook, Dave? No, but good morning to those who are saying good morning. All right. Uh, with all that being said, I'll invite us to stand as you are able, and as we continue move into the entrance hymn, Life is in the World, Hope for a New Day.
Let us share in the presence of God with celebration. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our gathering hymn is God of Mercy, God of Light, found in your red ELW number 714, or it can be found in your electronic worship materials.
Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now may the Lord of peace give you peace at all times and in all ways. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh, Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue this morning with the readings from Scripture. You may be seated. reading from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 9 through 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the New Testament epistle to the Colossians, chapter 1, 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before the word of the truth, the gospel, that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints of the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. God.
according to Luke, the tenth chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he said, Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man who was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to that place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the state of the neighborhood these days? How do we find this community that we live in? Now, I'm not simply talking about houses or apartments that sit next to us on our left or our right. I'm thinking about this community that we locate ourselves in, that stretches beyond those limiting borders. What does our neighborhood look like these days? We take a look at the headlines that come in to our phones and televisions and iPads. It doesn't look that good, does it? It has, at times over the past couple of years, felt that things seem to have been coming apart at the seams. A global pandemic provided the greatest disruption that we have known, one that is still going on, by the way. The political discourse in our country seems to be at an all-time low, with many having lost the capacity to connect with folks on the other side of the aisle. We had an insurrection at the Capitol. We've seen monumental Supreme Court decisions create chaos in the midst of this already tumultuous moment in history, including that insurrection, which we are learning more and more about every day. Mass shootings seem to have become the norm rather than the exception. In fact, one can at this point come almost have a sense of dread and an inevitability that sooner rather than later the news again will once, be, once again be flooded with images of grieving folks mourning the loss of a loved one. There have been some rough days in the neighborhood these days and the road that we travel, particularly in the last two and a half years or so. These are days that have left too many people, our neighbors, suffering and in pain, desperate for help as they are left vulnerable on the side of the road. The question that then is laid before us is what are we going to do about it? It's a question 
that's not just exclusive to our local community, but one that stretches throughout our nation and into the world, in the global community that we are a part of. In our gospel lesson for today, we encounter perhaps one of the most well-known parables found in the four gospel, and that is the parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm sure that most of us gathered here are at least familiar in some way with this particular parable. But I think it's important that it keeps coming up, that we keep hearing this story, because every time we do, I, at least for me, I, it's, its relevance seems to only increase every time we come back to it. Now the story begins with a trap set by a lawyer who is asking Jesus, what do I need to do to have eternal life? What does the law say? Jesus responds. The lawyer responds correctly. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and all your mind, and you shall love your neighbors as yourself. Now this is where the lawyer tries to get a little tricky. After Jesus affirms his answer, the lawyer asks, and just exactly who is my neighbor? The intent of the question is, of course, an attempt by this lawyer to narrow the scope of those he can consider his neighbor. He doesn't want to be responsible for those he doesn't like, or those who may not run in his circle, or those who are considered outsiders. Now, instead of receiving the answer that he seeks, the opportunity to be exclusive to those who don't run with him or carry the same mindset or have the same views, Jesus instead responds with a parable, of course, the parable of the Good Samaritan. In this familiar story, we find that it is the outcast, the Samaritan, the one whose society has judged and deemed an outsider, outsider and pariah. Samaritan is the one who is the neighbor, the one who renders aid to the man who had fallen into the hand of robbers, who was beaten and left for dead. It wasn't the Levite, it wasn't even the priest, but it was the most unexpected of the three who responded, who showed care and compassion for the man's wounds, who showed love, who shared resources, who brought him to a shelter at the end, and who paid for his stay while he recovered. In her commentary on the parable of the Good Samaritan that came out this week, Pastor Tiffany Cheney writes the following. The Gospel lesson for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost offers the familiar story of the Good Samaritan. It's a story about loving beyond our comfort zone, extravagantly loving those in need and loving without limits. What does that mean for us today? It means we can't settle for a world for any we can't settle for a world that has anything less than love and compassion that is accepted as the standard." End quote. Now pick a region of the world and you'll almost be guaranteed to find a group or population that finds itself labeled as outcast or pariahs or outside of what the norm is standard for that particular region as the Samaritan ones. When I was living in Hungary, this was the Roma, often disparagingly referred to as gypsies. Now I've mentioned to them before, but they are an example of those who have been cast out in the world that doesn't quite get them or want them. They've experienced educational segregation, government bias, blatant racist attacks, and in some instances have been victims of hate crimes and acts of violence. We, of course, see that in our country as well, as we continue to watch acts of violence and hate and racism seem to become more and more bold these days. The Gospel lesson for today invites us to perhaps look at a very familiar parable in a different way and see where we fit in the story and in the context of the world in which we live. It can be easy to say that we would find ourselves in the position of the Samaritan, jumping into the fray at a moment's notice, notice willing to help and offer resources without hesitation. And sure, at times that is true. 
but not always. As we look at this story again today, we should take some time to examine those moments when it's easier for us to be the priest or to be the Levite. Moments when we just simply want to keep walking our path without interruption or detour or inconvenience. I'm sure we've all done this at some point, myself included. And as we heard last week, we know that following the path of Jesus isn't easy. Sometimes we want to steer away and keep to what we know and follow the path that we think has been set up before us. And we know this is particularly hard given the news cycle as we continue to be bombarded by the needs of the world at a frenetic pace as we continue to hear stories of pain and horror and bloodshed. As we look for a path forward, the parable of the Good Samaritan invites us to consider who our neighbor is and how we respond when our neighbors, whether in our circle or not, are suffering and left for dead on the side of the road. In his efforts to find a loophole in loving certain people, this lawyer instead found himself convicted. Receiving the answer, not receiving the answer that he was hoping for, but instead being forced to acknowledge that it is the Samaritan who is the one that showed mercy in a moment that is nothing short of upending the status quo of society and the moment that defies the order that the world dictates. In his attempt to lay a trap for Jesus, this lawyer instead encounters the radical love that comes through this parable, the one that we encounter as we hear this parable again. And we're reminded that Jesus is not about the status quo, but rather defies the status quo and loves those who are challenged and defied and set aside by a world that won't have them. Jesus, in his teaching and ministry, turns the world upside down. As we hear these words again today as claimed children of God, these words of the parable are just as relevant now, if not more so, than they were 50, 100, 150, 200 years ago. And they invite us, call us, and actually, probably, more than anything else, challenge us to really and deeply consider how we might be better neighbors to all our neighbors, whether they run in our social circles, whether they look like us or not, whether they are in our immediate geographic vicinity or not. simultaneously both good and challenging news. It can be hard for us to recognize or to own up to the ways we may have fallen short for our friends, for our neighbors, for strangers. But even in those shortcomings where God keeps working through us and coming for us, calling us time and time and time again to be a force for good in the world, to recognize those moments when we may fall short, to respond in kind as the Samaritan did, to be a force for care and shelter, a force where resources are shared, not hoarded, a force where we, through our actions, show the glory of God, especially in these ways that we care and honor our neighbors and work together to make this neighborhood that we all share a better place. Everyone deserves a beautiful day in the neighborhood, as I believe Fred Rogers would say. Amen. We continue this morning with our hymn of the day. I will invite you to stand as you are able and turn to Number 712 in your red ELW, Lord whose love in humble service. Again, that's number 712 in your ELW, 
or can be found in your electronic worship materials.
united in Christ and united by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your, of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, you are our prayer. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. You pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchids, vines and bushes. You prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace, you are our prayer. Spirit of life who paints the skies in every hue, we praise you for morning and night, for dawn and dusk, and for every moment in between. We praise you for the vibrant cloud and serene colors of creation. We revel in the ever changing of the seasons. We thank you for the infinite and as yet undiscovered diversity of your creatures, of galaxies beyond our imagination. Teach us to feel all of you. Teach us to see and celebrate the sudden beauty in all of your name. God of grace. Your prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace. Your prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are suffering from COVID 19. Be present with those who continue to suffer long term symptoms. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Empower and give courage to the medical professionals providing care at the risk of their own health. And finally, strengthen those who are working to distribute the vaccine so that we may see an end to this pandemic. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need, orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community towards neighbors in need, bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, and avoided. God of grace, we rejoice in Bill's 76th birthday and the birth of a new baby boy. We also celebrate a new driver's license. We pray for CJ and Nancy who are hospitalized and for a full worship. We pray for Baby Casey's family after their passing, and we pray for healing for Allison. We continue our prayers for the in Ukraine and in other war torn places. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the saints who hold your love and mercy in this life, inspired by their witness to strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace in whichever way we are comfortable with. And for those online, share a like, a love, a laugh, or a comment of peace with one another. Remembering God's overflowing new life among us, let us gather our tithes and offering this morning. There are a number of ways in which you can give. The first is you can visit our website, www.bethlehemsturbridge.org, and at the bottom of our homepage, you will find a link to PayPal. It is there you can make your offering with your debit or credit card or your own PayPal account. You may also continue to mail your offering to the church. Simply send it to 345 Main Street, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, 01566. Again, that's Bethlehem Lutheran Church, 345 Main Street, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, 01566. For those who are gathered here in the sanctuary this morning, if you so choose, you may also leave your offering in the basket on the table in the narthex where you found the worship materials as you exit the sanctuary. For those who are gathered online, now is the time to have your bread and wine or grape juice ready as we prepare for the feast that's made for all. And now let us enter into a time of prayerful meditation as we make our offering to God.
took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the rest. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, the cup, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Power be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Here at Bethlehem, all are welcome to come to the table to share in the feast for all. Please know that should you choose to partake in only the bread or the wine, we believe that Christ's presence is in both the elements, no matter whether they are consumed separately or together. Trusting that the crucified and risen Christ is fully present for you in, with, and under one element. Today, as for those gathered here, we'll invite you to come forward for communion through the center aisle. You will receive a wafer from me and then be invited to maintain as you so choose and into, into a chalice of wine or to a chalice of grape juice. If you are in need of a gluten-free option, please make that known to me as you come forward. And if you would prefer a blessing to the meal, please come forward with your arms crossed along your chest. For those who are gathered online, now is the time to have your bread and wine or grape juice ready. As we commune as the gathered assembly, both in person and online, we'll invite you to commune at home using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
communion hymn this morning, we're still number 747, Red, White, of Heaven. strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen.
announcements this morning. I will be spending the week at Calumet this week as the camp chaplain. So I will be away in New Hampshire until next Saturday, but I will be uh, able to be uh, reached by phone or email. Uh, so I'll be keeping an eye on all of that as I am serving at Calumet this week. Um, just a note for some things coming up. Our uh, BLC Bowling Bonanza is going to be happening on August 12th at 7 p.m. at Mohican Bowl in Webster. Uh, let myself or Heather Miranda know if you can come. Uh, it's an intergenerational event. We would like everyone who is dealing with you want to bowl or come see you cast your make a fool out of himself. Um, come join us for, for bowling uh, on August 12th at 7 o'clock at Mohican Bowl. Uh, note that Walk the Walk for Calumet is well underway. Uh, it is not too late to register. Uh, you can visit Calumet's website to sign up for that. Um, next week, for those who are walking for Team Bethlehem, uh, I will be asking for miles uh, on August 5th, or August 15th, July 15th, uh, so I can submit those uh, to camp and we can keep track of uh, all of the miles we are walking for the benefit of uh, the Cambridgeshire Fund. Any other announcements this morning for the good of the community? I, oh, Andrea. Maybe this thing must be okay, but I might have some hands short and very call in place. My dad's name is Chuck, and thank you for that song. Men's shorts, 34 inch waist. Yes. There's, that's a need for the closet. Um, yes, no problem. Perfect. Thank you, Andrea. Um, also, please join us in Pine Hall after worship for some coffee and for some goodies and time of fellowship as well. Other announcements uh, this morning? Not seeing any? Any online, Dave? Nope. Okay. Uh, we will continue in our service with our uh, benediction. Please stand as you are able. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.